Elizabeth Summative on motion. What's more important than velocity? A lot of things. So hi, I'm going to teach you a bit about velocity. We're going to start off with calculating velocity. Now, velocity is actually the distance divided by the time. So, my object is going to be a simple wood stick. The distance my wood stick is going is one meter, and the force applied to it is a hairdryer. Now, just to make sure that my hairdryer is within the same force of my second object, which is a greater object, I'm going to keep the hairdryer on the same exact force as I did on the wood stick. And I'm going to calculate that time with a stopwatch. My wood stick is ready, my hair dryer is ready, and I just get this ready. My stuff looks ready. One, two, three. So, my wood stick took 2.2 seconds to get to 100 meters. Now to calculate that velocity, we're going to divide the time by the distance. So the distance was 2.2 milliseconds. And the distance was 1 meter. So what is 1 meter divided by 2.2 seconds? Now, as simple as that seems, yes, 2.2 milliseconds. So, in order to find my unit rate, I have to add in the um, milliseconds and the meter. So that would be 2.2 milliseconds by meter. So, my wood stick goes 2.2 milliseconds. I mean, yes, 2.2 milliseconds. Unfortunately, there were many distractions in this video. I hope you still understood what I was trying to say. Um, in parts of my video, I did say. Um, the wrong unit of measurement and I hope you might mind that and still understand. Thank you. Now because everything by the one corner of the I'm gonna try that five more times. Because what is on the side of it? Not accurate. So I'm gonna try that five more times and I'm gonna do a different object. A greater object to show you the same rule applies to every object. Okay. Stop watch ready. It's this ready. Hair dry is ready. Are we ready? Pretty attention. Okay. took a time of 2.4 milliseconds. Now, you see, this means that my first try was accurate because 2.4 milliseconds is near 2.2 milliseconds. But just to be sure, we're going to add that in. 0.4 milliseconds. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to divide 1 meter by 2.4 milliseconds. It's easy as it seems. Two, 1 meter divided by 2.4 meters. So R is in 2.4 milliseconds. 
So 2.4 milliseconds. And we also divided it by a meter. So we're going to add in that meter. So 2.4 milliseconds per meter. These are the five other trials I talked about in my previous slide. Though, as you can see, I did add in more trials. Different trials on a different object. between the actual cylinder and the um, surface which is the ground is so much more stronger is so much more solid than the friction between the wood stake and the ground friction is when two objects rub against each other by the way so basically the glass cylinder is smooth it's it's it's, I would say solid. It doesn't have that much much bumps as a wood stick does because a wood stick is made out of wood, and it has a lot of microscopic, microscopic bumps. More, it probably has more bumps than the glass does. It's like going to a skating rink. Wearing shoes to a skating rink will not boost your acceleration as much as wearing ice skating shoes because the blades um, have can interact better than the soles of your shoes and the ice rink. Thank you. Sir Isaac Newton's Three Laws of Motion Newton's First Law now I'm going to teach you about Newton's first law. Now, Newton's first law states that unless an object is in motion, it will stay in motion unless an outside, an unbalanced outside force is applied onto it. And it also states if an object is at rest, the object will stay at rest unless an outside force is applied to it. Let's take this to a wood stick. A wood stick is at rest. It is not moving, it is not in motion, it is at rest, staying here. Now there is no outside force applying to it. 
will it stay there or will it somehow move? No, it's not. Now my outer force is going to be my hair dryer. Let's see if this moves or stays in the same <coughs> or stays in the same um or stays still. Now you can tell that this wood stick wasn't was still, but now because an outside unbalanced force was applied to it, it went in motion. <laughs> Stopped. Watch again. This is the wood stick. This is the wood stick. Nothing else is there. Wood stick. Here. Even the hair dry stopped blowing, it stopped. Now, the reason it stopped is because of the friction between the surface and the wood stick. Now, friction is actually controlling the wood stick's acceleration because if the if the friction is very low and the surface and the object don't collide together easily and it makes it slower then that controls how fast it goes let me give you an example if you are on an ice rink with shoes you will not go as fast as you would if you were wearing skating shoes because the friction between the blade and the skate skating the ice is very strong but the soles of your shoes and the ice ring isn't as strong as it would be with the um, blades on your ice skating shoes I hope you understand this also follows with gravity now, gravity is the energy pulling you closer to the ground. When you jump, you don't float in the air like we all wish we did. No, we come straight back to the ground because gravity is pulling us to the center of the earth. Gravity is pulling every object to the center of the earth, but most objects stay in place because of the way they're constructed. So, basically, the two, the two forces that are acting on my wooden stick at the time is friction and gravity. Newton's second law. Next, I'm going to teach you about Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that force and mass affects acceleration. Now, acceleration is net force divided by the mass. Acceleration is also increase and decrease in speed and a change in direction of the object. This is the object. The mass of this object is 4.5. Is the force of the hairdryer going to affect both objects in a different way even though one object has a greater mass? Let's see. So this it's very much heavier than my wood stick. But in some case, I still need to decide to go further than my wood stick. Now, this is because the friction, again, between the ground and the object. The friction between the glass cylinder and the surface is much more, I would say, solid than the friction between the surface and the wood stick because the wood stick and the surface don't interact because don't interact as good as the glass cylinder because the wood stick is made out of wood, so it has bumps on it, microscopic, microscopic bumps um, that don't allow it to interact and move as softly and as calmly as the glass cylinder because the glass cylinder has less um, bumps because it is made out of glass and it is, um, I would say, calm and smooth. So, 
the force does affect the object if the object has a greater mass or a smaller mass. Oops, because Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that an object at rest, Newton's third law, for every object there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, can I mean the equal and opposite reaction is a hairdryer in the object? The action is a hairdryer being blown into the wood stick. But the reaction is the friction between the ground and the object. So this is the opposite direction because the friction is going that way and the hairdryer is going this way. Isn't that right? Thank you. Another example is let's say this is our wood stick. What I'm drawing now is a wood stick. Okay, and let's say I'm doing an experiment where my wood stick is going to be like a rocket. So my hairbrush is down below. Okay, my hairbrush is blowing a force so that my um, wood stick can lift off like a rocket ship. So this is my action. My action is the force pulling it up. My reaction is gravity. As I've told you before, gravity pulls every object to the center of the earth. When you jump, you do not float in the air like we all wish. You come straight back to the ground. So my reaction is, let me just go and have a color, gravity. And gravity, what gravity is trying to do is gravity is trying to pull, um, pull the wood stick down to the earth while the hairbrush is um, pushing it up. Now the smart, the funny thing is that, um, reaction, sorry, the funny thing is that it's equal. The gravity is between equal force as the hairbrush is, so that if there was no reaction to the, if there was just the hairbrush as the action, and there was no reaction, that would stick would fly, would fly, would continue to fly without the hairbrush, and that is why. Even though sometimes we feel we don't want it, we need a reaction in our life. We need one. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed Newton's Third Law. Thank you for watching.